Hello everyone and welcome. We are sitting inside of the Lexus RCF Track Edition and it has a 5.0 liter naturally aspirated V8 engine. And you know, not that long ago, naturally aspirated was pretty much the norm and turbocharged cars were the rare ones, the crazy powerful ones, the ones that were cool. And today that's kind of flipped. We're moving towards downsized turbochargers and now these big naturally aspirated engines uh, are becoming the more rare ones uh, and there's kind of an allure to them because of that. And so in this video, we're gonna be talking about five reasons why perhaps you shouldn't be buying that turbocharged car, perhaps you should be looking at a naturally aspirated engine because there are some real advantages to naturally aspirated engines and there are some real disadvantages to turbocharged cars. And so starting off, we are going to talk about throttle response. And of course, you know, turbo lag is gonna be mentioned here, but that's not my main point. My main point is with throttle response, with your throttle mapping, you know, if you were to think about what is my torque that I'm putting down on the ground and where is my foot on that throttle pedal as far as how much acceleration have I asked for, you want a nice linear relationship between those two so you get exactly what you ask for. And in a naturally aspirated engine like we have right here, that's much more easy to modulate. Uh, with a turbocharged car, basically you're waiting for that turbo to spool up and then you've got some control there. But there's kind of this gap in that throttle pedal where you go, okay, I don't have turbo boost right here and above this I do. And so, you know, I've driven cars, uh, for example, Subaru WRX, where at 50% throttle, it's capable of full boost. And at that point, it's like, well, why is the throttle pedal even there? It's basically just acting as an on-off switch instead of actually allowing you to modulate how much torque you want to the ground. And so that's what's really nice about the way naturally aspirated engines work is that you don't have to wait for that boost. And, you know, speaking of that boost, a lot of people say, well, you know, it's kind of cool to have that turbo lag. You kind of wait for it, you wait for it, and then bam, you're hit with all that torque. And that's cool. Uh, and, and my counter would be a delay is never a good thing. Would you want a delay in your steering response? No, of course not. Would you want a delay in your braking? No, of course not. That'd be incredibly dangerous. Would you want a delay in shifting gears? No, you want it to happen when you want it. This is America. I want it and I want it now. And that's how we should want our power. We should want it when we ask for it, not two seconds after. And so there's my rant on turbo lag. Uh, it's unfortunate uh, that it exists. And, you know, modern cars are doing a good job of shifting that torque curve so the turbo spools up more faster, which leads us to point number two, which is the torque curve. Now, this is something modern turbos are actually very good at, is getting a nice flat torque curve. And with a naturally aspirated engine, you're never going to have a perfectly flat torque curve. There's pretty much just going to be a peak in that torque curve where your engine is just getting the most air in it and it's making the most power, most torque at that peak of the torque curve. And so, you know, looking at a turbocharged engine, you might think, well, it's great that it has this long, flat torque curve. And yes, that's true, but the downside is before that flat curve and after that flat curve is where things kind of fall apart. So before it, you're waiting for that turbocharger to spool up, you've basically got no torque. And let's say you've got, you know, a 2.5 liter engine with 15 PSI boost. Well, it's gonna behave like a five liter engine at full boost, but until you get to full boost, it's gonna behave like, you know, a 2.5 liter engine and so you don't get that torque on the low end and if you do you're sacrificing your top end so you're designing that turbo what do you want do you want a lot of power do you want a lot of response and I think manufacturers have taken the correct idea lately and that they try to give it response over peak power because response feels better uh, than just having a really high horsepower engine but only at the very top of that torque curve the problem with this though is that that torque will really noticeably die off once you get into those higher RPM. And so versus a naturally aspirated engine, when you get up into those higher RPM, it just keeps pulling. And you know, <laughs> there's a joy to that. It's nice to be able to have power wherever you are in the RPM band, rather than waiting for that turbo to spool up and then not letting it die off once you get up into the top end. Now our third point is reliability versus cost because I'm not going to claim that a turbocharged engine is less reliable than a naturally aspirated engine. It very well could be. Uh, the thing is it takes more money to make it that way because it has to be built more robust than a naturally aspirated engine. You can get away uh, with less with a naturally aspirated engine because the internal pressures are less. So, you know, let's say you're putting 15 PSI uh, in an engine, that's twice as much air if everything's going really well 
than a naturally aspirated engine in each cylinder. And so your pressures are going to be dramatically higher and your temperatures are going to be dramatically higher. So, you know, if inside an engine with a naturally aspirated engine, you might be getting a thousand PSI peak pressure within those cylinders. A turbocharged engine could be 2000 PSI. A turbo diesel could be 3000 PSI. And that's why you see turbo diesels as such expensive engines. They're an expensive option because they have to be built very robust in order to handle those insane pressures that they see. On top of that is the heat. So, you know, the critical aspect in making sure you don't have wear within your engine is of course the oil and making sure you have proper oil flow and oil everywhere in between your metal on metal contact areas. And so with a turbocharged engine, this oil is exposed to significantly higher temperatures versus a naturally aspirated engine because you've got those higher pressures which result in higher temperatures within those cylinders. And then also the turbo itself gets extremely hot. It's cooled and lubricated with oil. So oil is passing through and going across that turbo shaft uh, between the impeller and the turbine. And so that oil is being exposed to very high heat, especially also when you shut your car off and then that oil is just sitting there on that hot turbo shaft and just cooking. And so the oil has a much more difficult time uh, taking care of a turbocharged engine versus a naturally aspirated engine simply because of the temperatures and the demands placed on that oil. So that's another big advantage to naturally aspirated engines is not having quite as much heat for the oil to have to deal with. Our fourth point is efficiency. And you know, downsized turbochargers are the new norm. And the whole purpose is to improve fuel economy. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean uh, that everything about a downsized turbo is more efficient. Yes, smaller engines will tend to use less fuel than larger engines. However, there are disadvantages to slapping a turbo on it. One of them being because, of course, that turbocharger is adding pressure within the cylinder, you have to use a lower compression ratio so that you don't run into knock and damage the engine. Well, there's a direct correlation between what is your compression ratio and what is your thermal efficiency. And so by reducing that compression ratio, you get less efficiency and naturally aspirated engines are able to get away with significantly higher compression ratios. And as a result, they're able to operate at efficient ranges. Now on top of this, of course, with that downsized turbo, uh, if you want power, that means you gotta spool up that turbocharger. And one of the problems with this is fuel enrichment. And so the problem is that, you know, you have all this heat and pressure because you've put all this air in and you're trying to burn all this fuel up. And so as a result, it's a very hot environment and hot environments are conducive for engine knock and engine knock will destroy your engine eventually. So you want to avoid it. Well, how do you reduce the temperatures within that cylinder? Well, you dump in more fuel. That's great. It protects your engine using that really rich air fuel mixture. But the downside, of course, is that your fuel economy goes out the window. And so with a turbocharged engine, you know, think about how much throttle are you giving it and what's your air fuel ratio? those turbocharged engines are going to have to dip into richer air fuel ratios earlier. And on top of that, at wide open throttle, they're probably going to be slightly more rich versus a naturally aspirated engine as well. So on that upper end of your power band, you know, where you're really asking for full, full power from your engine, your turbocharger is not going to be that efficient uh, because it's got to run such a rich air fuel mixture in order to protect the engine. And finally, point number five, and this this one is subjective, but with some objective reasons, is sound. And so, you know, there are three reasons why a turbocharged engine may not sound as great as a nice, uh, naturally aspirated 5.0 liter V8 like we're in right now. And, you know, the, the first one of those is where's the location of that turbo? Well, it sits between the engine and the atmosphere, so your tailpipe. And so because that turbo is sitting between your engine, which is shouting out this incredible noise, uh, that turbocharger is trying to take all of that energy that's coming out of the engine and spool it up and turn it into useful energy to add boost. So instead of trying to make all kinds of noise, that turbo is trying to take that noise away and make it useful. So that's a disappointment. Now, there's of course those turbo noises, the doo -doo -doo, you know, whatever it may be, uh, the blow off valves, there's added value, there's noise from the turbo, but you're pulling away noise from the engine. So that's kind of the disappointing thing about turbochargers versus a naturally aspirated engine. The other thing, because, you know, turbochargers allow for significantly more horsepower, well, they tend to mean you use a smaller engine. Smaller engines just simply don't put out as much bark, and then you have less cylinders. And 
So having less cylinders means your firing interval has, has a longer delay between it. So when you have all these firing, these cylinders firing back to back really close together, it sounds really cool. That's why V12s just sound so amazing. v 8 sound wonderful. It's having all of those firing intervals happen really close to one another rather than spreading them out like with a you know four cylinder engine so a v8 versus a four cylinder engine you're firing twice as often at whatever rpm you're at and so you get that really beautiful naturally aspirated sound and yeah it's just it's hard to argue against it it just sounds beautiful Boom. <laughs> it makes you smile and i guess this thing's beeping at me because uh, i need to shift but anyways i'm trying to listen to the engine so i'm a fan of this lexus rcf track edition they've done some serious weight savings on it over 170 pounds saved they've done so by adding carbon fiber on it uh, they've taken out uh, over 48 pounds of unsprung rotational inertia part of that using carbon ceramic brakes uh, which is nice to see they've got a titanium muffler so they've taken out some weight from this thing uh, and it's a it's a cool ride it sounds good the v8 you know 472 horsepower uh, so you know it's not crazy fast uh, but zero to 60 under four seconds so it's good I mean it's a it's a fun car so I've been enjoying it uh, and naturally aspirated engines uh, there's a special place in my art for them I, I do love these v8s uh, and and the bark that goes along with it so thank you all so much for watching if you have any questions or comments of course feel free to leave them below